Hey viewers, so hope you had a good Christmas and we're going to do some five ways to practice on your design system. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. My name is Roy, I'm a web designer. Let's get into the video. So just to start it off, straight away, I'm just creating a new frame. And I don't know if you've, you've used this before, but I tend to use image styles now. So I just click on the right where color styles is and I've selected an image and I'm going to call this person one. And this is going to be for all the avatars that you're going to see in the testimonial section. So rather than just do this slowly on each one, we're going to speed this bit up. And then we are going to just create a whole bunch of image styles that you can see on the right. And what I'm doing now, I'm creating an avatar component. So command alt or K and that will then get you the component for the shortcut key. And then I'll go to variants on the right. And now I'm just going to give the property a different name. So I think what I go for here is small or SM. And this naming convention is is very similar to Tailwind CSS. Uh, and then here I'm just going medium and then large. And then I think I have an extra large, which is 96. So this is all in the eight point grid. So you can see that I've got image styles. I've got an avatar component. Now I'm just placing this into a brand new section. And the nice thing here is now you can just go to your variant on the right and change the property to whatever size you want. And in this case, I'm going to medium. It's just super quick. Highly recommend just playing around with uh, components and then variants. It's just so much easier nowadays. Uh, and then here I'm just playing around with different sizes. And the goal of this section is to create a testimonial area. And now I'm just filling them in with the image styles that we created earlier. Um, the only painful thing about this is you have to play around with the crop and zoom in. So that's the thing that took me ages on this bit. Or well, this whole video is about an hour long. Um, well, it took me an hour, but here I'm just flipping the image to make sure it's facing the center, which is going to be the CTA. And what you can do is give multiple fills. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a color, background color. And now I'm just going to each one and just giving them their own fill with the person. So again, this is super quick. I think there's plugins to do avatar fills, but I, I prefer to choose images that I think are appropriate. Um, so again here, I'm just putting in some more image styles and this again, yeah, it just takes forever to do. But ideally what you can do is already crop the image size that you want right to the um, right to the face. Whereas what I did, I quickly removed the background in remove BG uh, or remove dot BG. So that's that's probably another thing. If you had if you have the avatars cropped better than what I've done, then you won't have to keep cropping and playing around with it. Uh, so I think that is probably better presentate or better planning beforehand. And like this one, for example, we have to zoom right into her. Whereas if you just crop the face, it'll probably be a lot quicker. And now I'm just planning to put in uh, another avatar, but I'm just playing around with shapes now. How can we connect all of the uh, all of the testimonials? And I think um, a round circle could be good. And what I'm doing now in this bit is I'm creating a component for logos. So again, it's Command Alt K for the shortcut, and and now I've named it logo. And here what you can do is you'll do variants for this. And again, the, the benefits of that is I've just then resized it. And now again, I'm using the eight point grid. 
I've made it really small there and, and I've changed the font size. So now I've got the small version and I have the, um, let's see what size I do next. It's probably extra small or medium small. So I've got three different sizes there. And now I just place that in from the assets area. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to place each avatar on the ring just to show that it's like a community uh, because that's what pitch one is. We're also providing a community to get involved with your pitch, give you feedback. And then what I've done a lot in the past is use mesh gradients. But what I'm doing now, I'm actually using the color from the mesh gradient. So I'm just pick eye dropping certain colors going round uh, anti-clockwise and trying to match what it is on the mesh gradient. So that's quite straightforward. And now this little nice technique where I put a stroke and then I increase the, the thickness of it and have a dash border and you get a certain effect like this. So it's like a dial. It's like you have a certain time limit on the pitch. So it's kind of that simple effect, nothing too crazy. And then I filled it with the mesh gradient to give it some color again. And then what I've put on there is not just about the deck, join a growing community. I thought that could be a good heading for the CTA that, that I will put there in a minute. So now we're going to come on to another component, which is the button, buttons component. And I think this could be really simple. So I started with a text. So you can use the T, type in button, and then uh, shift and A, which is shortcuts for creating auto layout which is, I think is just really really good because it's just so easy to fill the color and I go with the darkest gray of 900 and then the actual text color is the lightest gray or the second lightest gray well actually is the lightest gray and then give it a border radius of 8 and now what I'm doing what I've done in the past I've given the heights a set height, a fixed height, but now I'm just giving it eight on top and bottom padding, and then the padding left and right is 16. Uh, that way it's a bit more fluid. I'm trying to follow the Tailwind framework again because I, I I really do high, highly recommend their stuff, Tailwind CSS. So here I'm also vertically aligning the text in the middle. And another important thing is the line height, which I'm gonna do. So 24 pixels and there you go so it fills it out a bit better and from here I'm then going to proceed to create a component again using that shortcut again which is just so convenient and then a variant so the variant there's no shortcut or well, I haven't found one you just have to go to the right and click on variant and now what I'm going to do is this this bit gets a bit a bit messy and now you have to drag stuff around um, or increase the the frame size um, but here I'm just playing around and figuring out okay I want to actually have different variants of sizes so again here let's just have a think and this is in real time so add a new property and I have different property for size and then the first one is going to be state so you can think states as in like active and hover and disabled so there straight away I changed the size to medium or MD which I think is a great naming convention it's just quick and simple or, or, or let me know what do you think is that a good naming convention rather than just typing out the whole word medium and here I put in 28 line height and an 18 font size pixel. And now you can see that's quite a big difference from uh, small to medium. So now I'm just increasing the frame size. Uh, you can imagine how how deep you can get with variants. You could you could just there's three different sizes and how many states? Four different states. So you can have a lot of different buttons. And then if you have a secondary button example uh, so yeah I'm just playing with the padding top and bottom and I stick with well actually I go to 16 
and the padding on the left and right is 24. And now I go for another variant, which I believe I'm going to label large or LG. And from here, I bump the font size up to 18 and the line height to 28. And then the only difference now is the padding, which I believe will go up to 16 on the top and bottom, 32 on the left and the right. But now the, the height is the same as the medium, so we're going to have to bump up the padding on the top and the bottom. So the whole height is actually 60 pixels. So on a large button, it should go a bit higher. So I'm going 24 and 24. And now the height is 72. Well, I went with 20 and 20. The height is 68. So large buttons are around 72 pixels. So now you can see there's a difference with each of the buttons. And now you have a component for buttons. A very simple one. And now I just drag that in from the asset panel and we have a get started CTA. And now I'm just thinking, okay, how can I how can I just make this a bit more visually interesting? And then you've got the heading in the middle, which is quite typical. I'm just playing around again with the with the type. And this is probably what took a bit of time again, which is really nice to time box yourself. So you're not, you're not going to end up designing for ages. And here I'm just creating the testimonial and get your ducks in order and save time. And I figured that I'd have two testimonials and there was a really good, um, there's some good advice on what makes a good testimonial versus a bad one. So you don't just want to have a face and and the testimonial. Ideally, you want to have the actual name and also where they work. I think that's it feels a bit more genuine, possibly. So if the person wants to check it out or, you know, follow them up, then they can contact them or there's a real name and a real company. Uh, so that is what a good versus a bad testimony could be. So that bottom right John Doe would be a lot stronger as opposed to the top left one where it's just a testimonial. There's no name, there's no company name. So that's a very, a very simple tip uh, that I'd recommend. And we are getting to the end of this video. So again, thanks for everyone for your comments and your feedback. I'm looking forward to the new year. I hope you are too. It's been a crazy, crazy 2020. The plans for the new year is going to be project based. So again, I highly recommend any beginners or developers. What we're going to do is we're going to be practicing every week on a project. I'm going to try and spice it up a bit. So we're going to introduce different things, hopefully every week. So we're not going to just do the same old thing. Um, but we're going to stick to the same format where we're going to be creating logos, landing pages, website, page, the whole page, design systems. Uh, I think that's a good mixture of stuff to work on and also focusing on, on the problem of the whole design. So you're going to have an idea, a startup idea, and then we're going to take it from there. And I think that's a nice meaty project to do every week. And I hope you'll join me. So you can you can follow along, just do the challenge as well, create your own design or follow what I've done. Uh, and if you're a beginner, it's just good to just to practice every day. Um, and again, here what I've done, I'm just playing around. I'm putting the text on the top left because that's what you read first. And then the CTA right in the center. I thought I'd play around with it. Why not? It's a bit different. It's not your typical CTL testimonial section. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you if you found it useful, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and I'm going to see you in the new year. Okay, take care. Bye.